Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are talking splines and we're going to go over all the reasons of why you guys need them. Today we're going to be talking about splines. Three main reasons as to why you guys need them in your shop and or garage. It's going to be all covered in today's episode with everything from how do you know when you're done with bodywork to be able to call it quits. Maybe you're checking in on your car, why you need one to be able to check another shop's work. How you do bodywork with it, how you check everything in metal stage before you even start body filler. We're going to be discussing all of those details in today's video. We're going to show you guys and talk about the setup in the metal stage. Now I know this car is in primer. We actually just got this car and we were kind of going over doing some checks, but this is a good representation because this is a 63 Lincoln and it is very flat. So you would be taking the spline and verifying that the car is flat. We can go around the entire car and do this exact same thing. And you're only going to have a little air gap here at the end, which then you can check by just tilting the spline up on edge. Now, why is it important in the metal stage? Well, let's give you guys an example of, you had to put a quarter panel on this car and you have all of the spot welds removed from the perimeter of the quarter panel and you are clamping it up above. And when it comes to welding this wheel well lip into the inner structure, where you place that lip is going to be a direct reflection of your finish on the outside. And if you don't get that right from square one with a straight edge then and or sweep, then you are going to battle that with filler and you're going to make all of the excess areas around. So the scenario here would be, you, let's just say you tacked the top of the quarter in and you have it all clamped where you think you need it and it fits in relaxed. Now, what you do right here with this lip now, every time, if you guys have done one or have not done one, you can take this lip and you have, call it a quarter inch to half inch worth of play that you can push this quarter in and then spot weld it into the, to the inner structure. Well, if you put this here, if you just ran through the motions of just putting the quarter on, yep, it fits, and you just went through it without checking it, and you put this on here, if this wheel lip is out even a hair too much, you end up with this rocking because now you just created one major high point in the center of the quarter panel. And the only way to fix that is, well, one of two ways. You have filling this full of filler, which I do not recommend, or taking this fender lip and pushing it in farther so that way this high now sits flat and where it is. At that point, I don't want you to think that, yeah, yeah, we're good. We can just take a straight edge and run it through there. You technically would need a longer piece of, uh, whether it be steel, whether it be half inch bar, whether it be C channel, that you can do the span of the car. Now, majority of cars are not dead flat all the way to the end, but even if you're going from center or the back of the wheel to the center or the front of the front wheel, and you are checking the setup, right? You're setting it up to spike the ball in. If you have these things that matter on the distance here, everything on down the line is going to matter. Where those doors are set, where they are adjusted. And if you're off a tiny little bit in one direction or the other, it might only be off a little bit right in that area. So let's just say you're doing like a door setup or a door alignment. If you're only using a straight edge that's this long, and you make it panel to panel, but then you're trying to create a show car finish with a flat edge all the way front to back, you're going to end up with a, a bunch of filler in areas that you could have avoided as long as you lock the door in with filler and check out our other videos where we've done that. But you're gonna be using weather stripping to make sure it's where it needs to be when you set that panel up. So that way at the end, you don't put those things in there and it's sticking out far. The goal is that when you're done, it's right back where you were in the bodywork stage. Setting this up with a straight edge long enough to span all of your panels and to be able to check your panels individually to make sure they are flat. 
and then it, maybe your door gapping. You welded the edge of the door. You need a straight edge to be able to hammer and dolly the edge of that door back out flat. These are all of the details that you're going to need before you just run to spot welding all the panels into place. The biggest takeaway that I want you guys to get out of setting up your car with a spline in metal is that you are trying to create the shape in metal from the back of the car to the front of the car to eliminate excess filler. If you don't have it right in metal, then you're going to end up having to create that shape out of filler, and then it just becomes excessively thick. We're gonna be using the 55 Chevy that we've been working on. It's a pro street car, and this car is at about the 95 to 98% mark of being towards the end of done in the rough end bodywork stage. And by that, if you think you're done, what are the things that you're thinking about and the tools that you guys can use as a baseline to be able to check that work? Well, a spline is very good for that. A spline comes in all different thicknesses, different lengths, so that way that you can take these things, obviously the ones that are a little bit thicker are going to create a bigger sweep. A sweep is a curvature and you can even get sweeps that have the exact shape and they use it a lot for metal shaping and coach smithing. But a spline, especially when you're doing body work, is great for being able to check your shape because you can one, check a straight car. Uh, we've talked about in the past, maybe you're checking like a Dodge Dart that's super flat and you would be taking this spline and putting it on the car uh, perpendicular. Now, if you were taking the spline and you were going to be using it against the car, you would then be taking it and then tilting it up on edge. That way you are able to create the shape that you need. There's going to be a lot of guys that say, well, just block the car. How come, do, why do I need a spline? Well, here's the thing. If you go through and you're just blocking the car and you have no clue on where your hand placement is on the block and you have no way of verifying exactly where that low is, you're not going to see it. I can stick anybody on this car with that exact same block and they can go down the car just nice and gradual and a lot of times you guys will miss this. This is just to dial in and make sure that every reflection is 100% perfect. If you are using only the block, you'll go right through the trench because it's so minute. Now these Tri-5s, a lot of times you guys will go to shows and you'll see them where each panel, meaning the door, fender, and the quarter panel all look like a separate shape. Well, we are using the light source, whatever it is, and it's always good to check it early morning, late evening, I even think late evening is better, when the sun is down low and you have that in your background. You're going to be taking whatever it is, maybe it's the fence in your yard, stuff in your garage, and you're going to be scanning the car back and forth to make sure that that representation of whatever it is you're looking at, the reflection is showing. Now, obviously you would have to have the car in a primer and or wet sanded enough to a point where you could actually see a reflection. In this case, this is the VP2050 uh, epoxy primer from PPG and right out of the gun, it has a very nice sheen. It's like an eggshell but it gives you a really good representation. Yes, it's not wet sanded. This is straight off the gun. We haven't done any prep since spraying it, but you just want to check it. So then you can get on the ground low and use your light source checking it. The big thing here is going across this gap on all your gaps and making sure that when you look at that fence or that light in your garage, that as you pan back and forth, nothing changes. You don't want to see the light here and then over here on your door the light starts below it. You want to be seeing it direct shot and no change. We're looking for a mirror and a lot of people look at a mirror and they think well it's just shiny. It's it's polished out really good. That's what the mirror finish is. No, the mirror finish people think that the clear coats and the depth is all based on how much clear they put on a car. What we're referring to is all in the bodywork stage. It has nothing it has something to do with the clear, but it's definitely not why people think it has that depth. Those crazy depths and mirrors are because of these stages, and that's why we're trying to bring back the criticalness of having a spline. So if you are checking a car that, like I said, you think is done, the best way is to take that spline over every square inch that you can put it on and rub it up and down and look for a light source from up above. Now it's you can totally put a light below 
That way you can run this thing up and down and actually see where your gaps are. And obviously, depending on your curvature, you will be putting more pressure or lighter pressure on the spline to be able to see that gap. If it's a straight car, straight on. At that point, you can take a Sharpie and you can be putting reference marks as you move up and down with the spline to be able to give yourself the oval or the low that you're seeing. And it's just as a guide, so that way you guys can come in and use a spray guide coat to hit that area and then use the block that you were body working it to make sure that it's good. It only takes a few minutes to check your body work and maybe your car is sitting at a shop where you're paying someone to do it and you wanna make sure your car is gonna look good. Maybe you guys already talked about a said price and a expected finish. And if that expected finish is a show car quality, then a spline is needed or a straight edge to be able to even verify that. One thing I do wanna mention is that I know we're using a Sharpie in this stage, and because this is an epoxy DTM primer, we wanna make sure that before we even move forward with any other steps of adding body filler or adding any more primer, that you don't have any Sharpie left. You want it all completely removed. We're just using the Sharpie because a pencil right now, until this epoxy is scuffed, doesn't even stay on there. That's why we're not using a dry guide coat. We're using an aerosol can. If you use a dry guide coat, because this still has the sheen and it hasn't been blocked, you're, it's not gonna stick to it. It's not gonna show you what you need. At this point, we can guide coat that whole area and go beyond what you think your low is, just like we do with bodywork. So this is the next level block. And as you are doing your bodywork, and we're doing the thumb test that we've taught in our other videos, making sure that you have the thickest, longest block for that shape. The whole thing here is when you're in the 80 grit all the way up, as you do it, it's taking a little bit more effort. When you're doing final checks on the car in this stage, everything is supposed to be with just your fingertips, very, very light touch where you're just letting the weight of the block run over it. You don't wanna be using dull sandpaper, but what you're gonna see is that when we guide over that area that was low that we already have a reference for, the thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna have your hands inside smaller than, so let's just say your marked out area is larger, then your hands need to be larger or wider than the area that you're going to block out as a guide. But just a few swipes shows you exactly where your low is. At that point, you can then refer back to the other videos that we've done where we show the pencil trick, scuffing it up in that area and being able to come in and do a very small skim over that beyond the low and using the exact same spline to then swipe it as your spreader and make sure that that curvature is 100% perfect. Again, the here, here's the gray area. You're gonna have a lot of guys that are gonna watch this and they're gonna go light up the body shop that's working on their car but you have to understand that this level of finish takes hundreds and hundreds of hours. And if that was not quoted for your car, then you're not gonna get that. And I will be honest, there is very few shops across the US that does a caliber of car to this extent. If you're going to a collision shop, I would say 90% of those collision shops don't do this kind of finish. Not to say that they don't, but this is nitty gritty. This is what you're looking for and it's just fi figuring out with whether it's your shop or whether it's yourself, what do you want to take this car to? How straight do you want it? These splines are just a tool to be able to get you to 100% perfect. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and keep in mind all of the blocks, the splines, all the products we use, the videos that we reference are all in the description of this video. So feel free to check it out see some of the other work that we have. I hope that you guys share this video if it, you got something useful out of it and continue to learn, share what you know, and we will see you guys next week on another video.